The story begins on the eve of the year 2076. A game suddenly descends into reality. The sky shatters, unleashing dungeons across the world. From these dungeons emerge hordes of powerful and relentless monsters, slaughtering humans and driving humanity to the brink of extinction. However, alongside destruction, divine talents are bestowed. Amidst the chaos, a select few awaken with extraordinary abilities, transforming into hunters, humanity's last hope against the monstrous threat. These newly empowered hunters quickly rise to prominence, establishing a new order where strength determines one's fate. The strong thrive, while the weak struggle to survive. In pursuit of greater power and wealth, formidable hunters delve into various dungeons, challenging bosses, acquiring treasures, and leveling up. This marks the beginning of the era of global hunters. At the heart of this era stands Hunter Square, a grand monument to the strength and ambition of those who rise above the ordinary. Su Yong, however, ascends these steps with a sigh, the weight of his unremarkable class contrasting sharply with the grandeur surrounding him. I could have awakened to something rare, but I got. Su Yang's eyes narrow at the personal panel, flashing his ordinary warrior class, a stark reminder of his disappointing fate. In this world, those without rare professions are just ordinary. As Su Yang walks, his thoughts are weighed down by the reality of being just another face in the crowd, where strength and rarity reign supreme. I heard you got stuck with the most useless class. Suits you, right? A familiar taunt hits his ears, the voice dripping with mockery as Su Yang recognizes the usual bully. Ah, it's you again, Su Yang responds flatly. His irritation masked under a calm exterior as he faces yet another jab at his status. A fresh warrior, basically just a bit stronger than a regular person. The mockery continues, driving home the point that Su Yang's class is nothing more than a joke to those around him. Su Yang's hand snaps out, delivering a stinging slap. Where did this fly come from? His pride hurt more than his face. Oh, it's Wang Fei, my classmate. Su Yang responds coolly his casual tone contrasting with the aggression of his action. Heard you awakened into a rare ice mage class. Congratulations. His voice laced with sarcasm as he tries to recover from the blow. But Su Yang is already calculating. I heard mages have weak physical strength right after awakening. His mind churns with possibilities. How about we test it out right now? Su Yang's voice is steady, challenging as he faces Wang Fei with a calm that unnerves his opponent. Damn, awakening into the most garbage warrior class, and he still dreams of being arrogant. Wang snaps back, his earlier confidence shaken, but still holding on to his disdain. Suddenly, an urgent voice cuts through the tension. Boss, look quickly. Wang Fei's expression shifts from curiosity to alarm. These people are... Su Yang's eyes narrow in realization his heart sinking. The raiding team from the Spirit Hunt Guild, he thinks, the words heavy with the weight of their reputation. As the group descends the steps, the atmosphere grows tense, charged with the presence of some of the most formidable hunters in the city. Among them is their leader, a level 95 fourth-tier hunter known as Storm Archer. The title alone is enough to send shivers down the spines of those who know the power it commands. The lead hunter moves through the crowd with urgency. Get out of the way. I'm in a hurry, he commands. Wang Fei, startled, recognizes the man. He's the one who fought and won against that high-level monster in West Spirit City. He thinks, stepping aside. Gathering courage, Wang Fei calls out. Excuse me, are you here for recruitment? I'm an ice mage, a rare profession. Can I join? The hunter barely glances at him. The person in charge is down there. We're the raiding team. Move. Wait. Did you hear my profession? Wang Fei excitedly repeats, Ice Mage Control Specialist. Good. The hunter nods. Give him a card. Wang Fei's heart races as he accepts the card. Thank you. His dream of joining the prestigious guild now feels within reach. The hunter leader nods. All right, go down later and give him your card. As the group moves down the steps, hopefuls call out, I'm an archer, and I'm a thief. Archers, check with the branch. No time for thieves. 
The leader dismisses those who don't meet the standard. Su Yang, determined, speaks up. What about warriors? The leader pauses, then continues down the steps without a word. He actually ignored me. Is this reality? In this world, only strength matters, Su Yang thinks, feeling the weight of being overlooked. He reflects on the harsh reality of his chosen path. Usually, the chosen profession determines a person's future potential. So from the moment I chose warrior, my fate was already sealed, he thinks, acknowledging the limited opportunities ahead. Even lower-tier squads hesitate to accept warriors, let alone elite groups like the Spirit Hunt Guild. Nearby, others marvel at the elite status of the passing group. Save it, they're fourth-tier archers, someone comments, recognizing the immense power and influence these hunters wield. Su Yang, listening in, overhears something that grabs his attention. The Black Dragon's lair is in the spirit tier area. He wonders, his thoughts racing as he considers the implications of this new information. The Black Dragon, a towering, menacing creature, dominates the battlefield, surrounded by powerful, elite monsters. In this world, death isn't final, but it carries harsh penalties. Experience loss until your level drops to zero. The competition between top guilds is fierce, especially with the risk of losing rare equipment. The most terrifying boss, level 99 Black Flame Wings AOS, stands as a near insurmountable challenge. Even the strongest guilds have fallen to it. Yet the Spirit Hunt Guild, known for their hunters at fourth transcendence or higher, has never failed a raid. As they prepare to face the dragon, Su Yong watches calculating his next move. Survival here demands not just strength, but strategy. Maybe they can really do it. The reality of this world hits him. Only the strong survive. Am I destined to be a pauper in this life, trampled underfoot by the powerful? Suddenly, a notification flashes. Perfect soul host detected. Boss part-time system will be bound soon. Confused and alarmed. Su Yang questions, a system? What does part-time boss mean? As the mysterious power surges within him, the uncertainty of his future deepens. As the system loads, Su Yong realizes the gravity of his situation. The boss part-time system requires him to act as a dungeon boss, resisting other players. If the host kills a player, they will share the experience and equipment drops, the system prompts. Su Yong understands the potential. Defeating players could propel him from the lowest level to transcendence, making even the weakest strong. But there's a catch. What awaits me if I'm defeated? As the system warns of the risks, Su Yang contemplates the dangerous path ahead. His mind races. This could be his chance, but it's clear that the stakes are higher than ever. The tension rises as the countdown begins. 5 4 3. Su Yang knows he has to make a choice. With each tick, his resolve strengthens. Instead of being forever trapped as a dungeon boss, he sees this as the only way to become stronger. With the clock ticking down, he finally makes his decision. Yes, let's start. The system immediately responds. Ding. Host is chosen. Part-time system activated. Part-time teleportation initiated. As the teleportation begins, Su Wong makes one final request. Please give me a powerful boss. The scene closes with him being whisked away to his new destiny. Su Wong is abruptly transported to a new location. The atmosphere is ominous and foreboding. The terrain is harsh and desolate, with jagged rocks and an eerie red glow casting long shadows. As he tries to get his bearings, a massive, glowing eye appears before him, unblinking and intense. Where is this place? He wonders, anxiety creeping in. Did the part-time job work out? His gaze shifts to the surrounding area, where he sees towering, fearsome creatures, level 95 Dark Claw, flying dragons, and elite dragon warriors. The power emanating from them is overwhelming. They're all dragon monsters at this level, Su Wong realizes, noting the strength of the challenge ahead. By their looks, dragons should be quite tall. A voice breaks the tense silence, reverberating through the cavernous space. My noble king, have you woken from your long dream? Su Wong's eyes widen in shock. King? You mean me? The Dragon King? His mind races as he confronts the towering figure before him. No way. 
My part-time boss is a level 99 dragon boss, Black Flame Wing. The realization hits hard. He's not just any boss. He's become one of the most feared entities in the game. The final message seals his fate. Current host is Black Dragon's Lair, level 99 boss, Black Flame Wing. Su Wong, now transformed into the Black Flame Dragon, feels the overwhelming power coursing through his new form. As the stats and abilities flood his mind, he realizes the terrifying might he now wields. The strength of this level 99 fifth transcendence monster is beyond anything he imagined. These wings, the power of the black flame, it's too strong, he thinks. But with the power comes a revelation. The true essence of his newfound strength lies not just in brute force, but in the unique, devastating talents that come with being the black flame dragon. This form can resist all physical and magical damage, he marvels. No attack can touch me. No blade can harm me. The realization of his invulnerability sends a surge of adrenaline through him. Add to that these exclusive skills. There's no way any player could be my opponent. An endless surge of power courses through his body, leaving him feeling invincible. This feeling, it's unbelievably refreshing he thinks, savoring the overwhelming strength he now commands. As long as I can defeat players and make their experience points mine, this life of absolute power is something I can live with. Bring it on! Su Wong stands overwhelmed by the immense power he feels. Is this real? He mutters, disbelief tinging his voice. His transformation is unmistakable. He has become a dragon. Below, a gathering of dragons and dark creatures kneel revering him as their king. My king, calm your anger. Please spare us, your loyal subjects. One dragon pleads, trembling with fear. A sudden realization hits Su Wong. Huh, I must have accidentally unleashed the dragon roar skill. The immense power he wields is almost too much to handle. This must be the true power of a boss. He muses, feeling a mix of exhilaration and fear. One of his henchmen, a cloaked figure, acknowledges Su Wong's potential. No doubt, you truly are my king. Even in your youth, you wield power beyond measure. With time, conquering the human world will be just a matter of time. Right youth, Su Wong ponders. The information also mentioned that. But normally, bosses and instances are fixed at a certain level. The thought lingers, making him realize just how unique his situation is. As he processes this, a chilling possibility dawns on him. Could it be that the King of Black Flame can actually level up? Su Wong, now in his dragon form, looms over a captive elf. What's this damn evil dragon up to again? She mutters defiantly, her eyes filled with a mix of fear and resolve. If you have any sense, release me early, or the elven race will surely make you pay. Su Wong's thoughts race as he observes her. Elf race NPCs in the instance. After the game descended into the real world, many fantasy races appeared, but this is the first time I've seen real elves. Suddenly, a strange distortion catches the elf's attention. Spatial disturbance. What's happening? She gasps, her eyes widening in alarm. Noticing a change in the atmosphere, she gasps in relief. It's a player. Finally, a hero has come to rescue me. Dragon. Your doom is near. Su Wong's gaze, however, doesn't waver. He locks eyes with her, his intensity unnerving the elf. Why? Why are you staring at me like that, she stammers. This dragon usually ignores my insults. Why is it suddenly reacting today so strangely? Su Wong, still in thought, recalls the Spirit Hunt Guild. I didn't expect them to arrive so quickly. As the Spirit Hunt Guild's forces appear on the scene, Su Wong's mind races. The Spirit Hunt Guild's strategies seem flawless. Can they really defeat me? Although the Black Dragon's strength is overwhelming, the situation requires caution. He summons an ominous power, surging through him, readying himself for the imminent battle. The Spirit Hunt Guild moves with precision, their leader commanding. Let's use skills to investigate first. Everyone stay alert. Today's strategy must not fail. As they advance, one of the scouts exclaims, Found it! The group halts, their eyes narrowing on their target. 
Tension rises as they prepare to engage. This is the main assault team of the Spirit Hunt Guild, Su Wang observes, recognizing the formidable figures before him. Each one of them is a powerful warrior, a serious threat to my plans. We must investigate carefully. This dragon could be hiding its true power, the guild leader says, the weight of their mission palpable as they prepare to launch their attack. Let's go! The command rings out, and the assault team charges forward. The Spirit Hunt Guild advances confidently, their seasoned members ready to take on whatever lies ahead. As they move, they encounter several dragon-like creatures. Guild Master, detectors have confirmed small monsters ahead. Level 80 and Level 81, a report comes in swiftly. The guild leader nods, let's test their strength. Tanks up front, others use fire attribute attacks. Max output, quickly. The guild springs into action, engaging the monsters with well-coordinated attacks. Keep the formation, continue to move forward. The battle intensifies, their expertise and power on full display. As they progress deeper into the dungeon, Su Wong observes, indeed it's the Spirit Hunt Guild. Their formation and discipline are top-notch. Suddenly, one of the guild members shouts, Guild Master, what's this? It fell from the sky. Eyes widen in shock as another exclaims, Holy crap, look at its stats. Tension rises as the challenge escalates. A sudden ominous alarm sounds throughout the dungeon. The guild members freeze as the system blares. Intruders detected. Before they can react, a massive figure descends. What's going on? It's an elite monster. One of the guild members shouts. The system identifies the beast. Level 95 elite dragon warrior, boasting immense health and formidable talents. Panic spreads quickly. Defend quick. Defend. The guild leader commands as the elite monster charges with terrifying speed. But before they can brace themselves, the monster disappears. Teleportation? The guild leader's eyes widen in disbelief. The elite dragon warrior charges forward with deadly intent. Roaring, meet your end. One brave guild member steps up, shouting, I'll do it. He activates a powerful skill, Divine Light Shield Barrier, immune to all damage for 10 seconds. The Golden Barrier envelopes him just in time, deflecting the dragon's ferocious attack. The guild leader shouts commands urgently, Don't panic. Range squads, fall back. Melee, engage first. Apply buffs and bursts. Focus fire on the target. Arrows glowing with wind energy strike the dragon as storm arrows deal multiple high wind attribute damage. The dragon roars in pain as it's engulfed in a storm of arrows and flames, but it isn't easily defeated. Its roar reverberates through the battlefield, the sheer force of its presence making it clear this battle is far from over. Suang watches the battle unfold, thinking... Never in this game world has an opponent felt so overwhelmingly powerful. I shouldn't take the Spirit Hunt Guild lightly. Now, transformed into the towering dragon warrior, Suong stands amidst the chaos. The elf in the cage sneers at him, taunting, Ha! Huh, you startled me. I thought you were up to something big, but sending your lackeys to their deaths is useless. More figures emerge from the shadows. Whoa, what's happening here? Suong thinks. They go again. They're all elites, he mutters internally, as a formidable group of six elite monsters charges forward to join the fray. From the Spirit Hunt Guild's ranks, a voice echoes in desperation. Six of them, Guild Master. That's too many. The realization hits hard. The odds are turning against them. In the heat of battle, a member of the guild shouts in panic, Guild Master, we've never encountered this before. What do we do? The leader grits his teeth. Thinking, damn it, today is really strange. Determined, he yells back, elite monsters are nothing to be afraid of. Our guild doesn't mess around. I specialize in elites. Bring it on. His rallying cry spurs the group into action. Reform the formation. Prioritize healing. Maintain aggro. And face away from the crowd. The orders are barked with precision as the guild tries to regain control but the elite monsters aren't giving them any time to regroup. The scene erupts in chaos as powerful attacks clash, 
and the guild members barely hold the line. Protect the healers. Heal. Echoes desperately through the battlefield as tanks brace themselves against the relentless onslaught. They're really tenacious, one guild member exclaims. Another adds, I thought taking out the frontliners and breaking their formation would send them back, but they're fighting to the end. Suong observes the battle, impressed by the player's resilience. Impressive players, he thinks. Your tricks might work against me, but don't just stand there waiting for your demise. However, he ponders, this level of strength shouldn't be enough to defeat me as a boss, right? Do they have any aces up their sleeves? Suddenly, Suong notices something odd. Wait, why aren't they coming toward me? He watches as the players shift focus in another direction. Could there be something over there? His eyes narrow as he spots a mysterious light. The Dragon Slayer's tomb reveals itself, and one of the players triumphantly exclaims, What is this? The player holds up a newly acquired item, the Dragon Slayer's Heart, a powerful quest item capable of ignoring a dragon's talents. Suong's eyes widen as he realizes the potential threat. My king, what's wrong? A minion asks. Fully immersed in his role as the dragon, Suong quickly comprehends the player's strategy. I get it, it's just like strategies in online games. If they can ignore my talents, there's a possibility of defeating me, he thinks, his eyes narrowing. From a distance, the imprisoned elf watches the tension escalate, muttering. No, there's no way this is going to work. Suddenly, Suong roars with determination. Leaving the lair early, he charges forward with fiery intensity. His onlooking minions shout. Lord AOS himself is taking action. Our king will destroy them all. Suong, fully embracing the dragon's power, charges forward with unrelenting force. His mind races. We cannot let the Spirit Hunt Guild get their hands on it. I didn't expect so many surprises in this instance. Meanwhile, the guild members continue their advance. Weapons ready, one shouts. The map shows that the Black Dragon's lair isn't far. We must be prepared for any unexpected situations. The guild master acknowledges. We exchange the strategy with the Heavenly Mechanism Pavilion. It can't be fake. However, a member voices concern. But guild master, if we're approaching the lair, won't it alert the boss? Impossible, the guild master dismisses. The Black Dragon is just a boss in an instance. As long as we don't attack, it won't leave its lair. We'll crush it. Suddenly, someone notices something unusual. Ah, what's that noise? One member asks. Guildmaster, some scattered dragon sounds are coming. Confusion spreads as another member speculates. Wait, could the main dragon appear next? Then, with dread settling in, they see it clearly. The wing of black flame. The guild members freeze in shock. No, it can't be. Why is the boss appearing here? One exclaims in disbelief. Another, realizing the gravity of the situation, shouts, those bastards from the Heavenly Mechanism Pavilion deceived us. Panic spreads. What do we do now? Do we have to fight? Someone asks, their voice trembling. Without the Dragon Slayer's heart, the Invincible Spirit Hunt Guild suddenly finds itself vulnerable. As tension fills the air, Suong's mind races with strategy. Good. Let's eliminate them all in one go. The atmosphere crackles with energy as the wing of black flame. Black Dragon AOS prepares to unleash its might. A flash of light strikes, but the enemy stands tall. Suong is taken aback by their resilience as a confident figure steps forward. None of you are allowed to leave. Get back to your positions. Is there anything we can't beat? The guild leader roars, kill the black dragon, and take all the loot. The massive dragon rises, commanding fear with its presence. With a resolute voice, Suong challenges, then come at me, spirit hunt guild. The scene explodes into chaos as both sides prepare for the ultimate showdown. The final command echoes, hit it hard. The leader of the spirit hunt guild commands his team with precision and urgency. Lee Dan, Activate the strongest defense barrier immediately, then grab the hatred. Healers, keep the mana regeneration up to support Lee's defense. Yen, maintain the holy light. The support classes are instructed to apply all single target buffs to both the leader and Jaya. 
Ming, maximize our output. The team pushes forward, working in perfect sync. According to the guide, we're not far from the Dragon Slayer's tomb. As long as we can, a sudden realization dawns. It's the tail. As the team presses on, the air thickens with tension. Get down, everyone, the leader shouts, sensing the impending danger. In an instant, the ground shakes violently as a massive force strikes. Boom! The black dragon's tail crashes down with terrifying power, its sheer size and strength overwhelming the battlefield, forcing everyone to take cover. Faced with the dragon's overwhelming might, the team quickly realizes the gravity of their situation. All defensive moves now. Focus on defense, just in case. The leader commands, understanding that their survival hinges on withstanding the dragon's onslaught. The dragon's menacing gaze and towering form dominate the battlefield, each movement a reminder of the deadly threat they face. Let's go. The leader's rallying cry cuts through the tension. With renewed determination, the team unleashes a barrage of their most powerful attacks. Thunderous strikes, fiery blasts, and devastating pillars of destruction converge on the Black Dragon, each warrior pouring everything they have into this final, desperate assault. The air crackles with energy as their combined efforts are aimed at taking down the towering beast once and for all. As the first wave of attacks impacts the Black Dragon, the leader's voice rings out with urgency. Prepare for the second wave. At least take down 5% of its health first. His command is filled with determination, knowing that any hesitation could mean doom. But then his eyes widen in shock as he realizes something unexpected. What? Despite unleashing their strongest skills, the team is shocked to see that they've only dealt a mere 10,000 damage, barely scratching the dragon's defense. Panic starts to set in as they realize the dragon's damage reduction is too powerful, making their efforts seem futile. The guild leader tries to rally them, urging continued attacks, but frustration builds as the dragon's health stubbornly remains above three-quarters full. To the dragon, their assault feels like nothing more than a swarm of irritating mosquitoes. Despite their strategy failing, the team continues their relentless assault, fueled by the hope that they can still overcome the odds. The dragon, observing their persistence, decides it's time to end their efforts. With a powerful roar, it signals the beginning of its devastating counterattack, bringing a sense of impending doom. As the dragon unleashes its fiery wrath, the battlefield is engulfed in flames. The force of the attack sends the guild members sprawling, their hopes of victory burning away with the fire. It's over, the dragon remarks with cold finality, its gaze sweeping over the defeated warriors. Seems even an A-level guild is no match for me. It concludes, the devastation it has wrought serving as proof of its unmatched power. As the guild leader struggles to his feet, a question gnaws at him. Why did it release the skill now? Panic grips him as he realizes the dragon might be vulnerable. Hurry, get back on your feet, he commands, desperation in his voice. The boss will be paralyzed after using that skill. Keep attacking. We can't afford to lose. Despite the mounting odds, there's a sliver of hope in his words, but the weight of their ongoing losses presses down on him. His eyes widen in shock as the realization hits. Damn it. Why didn't that black dragon get paralyzed? Even though it released the skill, his voice is filled with disbelief, a stark contrast to the expected outcome. As the dragon roars, fire burning in its maw, the leader's hope turns to panic. Paralyzed, he shouts, but the dragon shows no sign of weakening. The black dragon unleashes a torrent of searing flames, engulfing everything in its path. The intense heat and overwhelming force drive the leader and his team to the brink. A scream echoes through the battlefield, a desperate cry of pain and fear as the flames close in. Engulfed in fire, the leader's final thoughts are filled with defiance. Damn Black Dragon, I'm not finished with you yet. As the fire consumes him, a cold system notification echoes through the void. Ding. System. Intruders have been completely eliminated. Congratulations, host. Experience conversion is now commencing. The battle ends not with victory, 
but with a chilling reminder of the dragon's unstoppable power. As the dragon feels a surge of energy flowing into it, a realization dawns. Huh? Is that experience points flowing in? Is it over? The system notifications confirm its victory, listing each fallen foe one by one. The dragon, now aware of its triumph, understands that it has successfully eliminated every last member of the guild. As it continues to gain experience, the notifications echo relentlessly in its mind. Ding, ding. Each sound signals another level gained. The leveling up just won't stop, the dragon thinks, almost overwhelmed by the rapid surge of power. The system message reveals the extent of its growth. An incredible leap from level 1 to level 20, with a massive overflow of experience waiting to be converted. The transformation is imminent, it realizes, but knows it must act quickly to harness this newfound strength. As the personal panel appears, the dragon is stunned by the overflow of experience. My level can keep skyrocketing even after the transfer? I might even hit level 40C transformation today. This speed is terrifying. But then something else grabs its attention. A dazzling array of equipment drops. Did I just get loot from a high-level guild like Ling Hunting? Maybe even rare, gold-level items? As the loot materializes, the dragon is thrilled. Holy crap! Among the items are three diamond tier pieces. Storms call longbow, mind sprites call necklace, and cloud flow boots, plus several platinum tier weapons like the flame greatsword and right remnant staff. Three diamond tier items and several platinum tier two. The dragon's excitement peaks, knowing this is just the beginning of its rise. As it surveys the loot, its gaze lands on a familiar longbow. If I remember correctly, isn't this the main weapon of the vice president? Xiaoming? A grin of satisfaction spreads across its face. Huh. Ling hunting must be bleeding out now. Although warriors can't use it, taking it to the auction house could easily net billions. This is a huge profit, it thinks, scanning through the rest of the spoils. Basic agility potions, intermediate strength potions, and skill scrolls like Flame Baptism and Rock Barrier catch its eye. Nice, nice. This is too good to be true. Just then, something else catches its attention, a strange glowing item. As the dragon inspects the mysterious glow, a notification appears. Broken Boundless Gem, special item. When embedded in equipment, it can eliminate level restrictions. This item is so powerful. With it, even a level 1 newbie can wield platinum tier equipment that originally required level 61. The dragon's mind races with possibilities. Next, its attention shifts to the flame Great Sword, a weapon of immense power. The description reads, This is the weapon of a flame giant with a powerful blade that has slain countless enemies. The flames on the blade, as hot as lava, are ready to devour any creature in front of it. Among all the platinum tier equipment, this sword is the most suitable for my warrior class, the dragon thinks. As long as I use the boundless gem, even though I'm only level 20, I can wield platinum tier equipment. With this, I'll be able to kill anything. A further description reveals the sword's traits. Flame enchantment. Consumes mana to obtain a flame enchantment adding 40% of the strength attribute as flame damage to attacks. Remnants of the Flame Giant Consumes all mana to summon a flame giant for 10 minutes. Cool down, 24 hours. Just then, the dragon receives a notification. The current dual tasking time is about to end. Countdown, 5 minutes. The instance is about to reset. You can also choose to return immediately. Confirm by clicking yes. Eager to capitalize on its newfound strength, the dragon thinks, I can't wait to go back and change jobs. Returning immediately, it confirms its decision, ready to embrace the next phase of its power. As Su Yang returns, he finds himself back in familiar surroundings. Did I just go straight home? He wonders, slightly surprised, having expected to be transported to the job change plaza. He marvels at the system's realism. Su Yang's eyes widen as the system interface reveals his new status. Level 20, with unallocated attribute points. The excitement is palpable. I'm really level 20. This isn't a dream. Awesome, he exclaims, his fists clenching with determination. 
Without hesitation, he begins to allocate his points, reasoning carefully. Let's go with 100 in strength and 10 in spirit. Although warriors usually don't add spirit, with this system, I can't just follow the usual path. The scrolls I obtained have minimum spirit requirements to use, so adding spirit will be beneficial. He solidifies his decision, ready to harness this newfound power, as a golden light envelopes him, signaling the enhancement of his attributes. A sudden burst of energy erupts around him. Adding points actually caused a burst of aura? Is it because I added 20 levels worth of points at once? He marvels at the immense power coursing through his body. Realizing the intensity of the transformation, he mutters, I should try not to overdo it in the future. As the overwhelming energy subsides, Su Yang glances at the clock, realizing it's too late to proceed further. Let's rest for now. Tomorrow, I'll go to the temple to take the transfer quest, he affirms, already planning his next move to complete the job change. The scene shifts to the Spirit Hunter Guild Hall, where preparations for upcoming challenges are already underway. As the guild leader returns much sooner than expected, a surprise member exclaims, Leader, why are you back so soon? The instance ended. Panic spreads through the group as another member notices something alarming. Wait, leader, how come your level dropped? The sudden realization shocks everyone as they grasp the gravity of what just transpired. Lean, at level 90 and seething with rage, exclaims, Did the group die? How could this happen? This isn't the strategy Tianji Pavilion gave us. His frustration boils over. Damn Tianji Pavilion. I traded the universe ring for their strategy, and they played us for fools. Betrayal stings as he realizes their plans have backfired. Vice President Xiao, what happened to him? Xiao Ming, at level 86, lies unconscious. A member explains, his diamond tier weapon exploded. He's badly injured and already passed out. Frustration builds as they lament their lost gear and resources. In my diamond tier boots? In the elf palace. Damn it. The situation grows increasingly dire with each setback. Lean seethes with anger, clenching his fists. The esteemed s rank guild, Tianji Pavilion, dares to sell fake strategies. I'm going to find them right now and demand an explanation. They won't get away with this failure in clearing the Black Dragon instance. His determination is clear. He won't let this betrayal go unpunished. With a fierce resolve, Lean's eyes blaze with determination as he vows. I won't rest until I get answers. The scene shifts to Lennon Orphanage, where a delivery truck arrives, catching the attention of the children playing nearby. Grandpa, come and look, one of them shouts excitedly. Wow, there are so many things. The children's excitement grows as an elderly man approaches, puzzled by the scene. Young man, did you deliver to the wrong place? He asks the worker unloading crates. The worker checks his list and confirms, no mistake. This delivery is for a young man named Su Yang. The address is correct. Little Su Yang? Where did he get so much money? The elderly man murmurs in disbelief, reflecting the astonishment felt by everyone present. As the workers unload the crates, a young girl named Xiao runs excitedly toward the stack boxes. Suddenly, one of the crates begins to tip over. Be careful, Xiao, someone shouts, but it's too late. The crate falls. Just before it hits her, Su Yang rushes in and catches it. Xiao, long time no see, he says with a smile, setting the crate down safely. Big brother Su Yang. Overjoyed to see him, the children gather around, excitedly shouting, It's really big brother Su Yang. You're back. We missed you so much. Su Yang smiles warmly. Seems like you're all as lively as ever. That puts my mind at ease. An older man approaches, noticing how much Su Yang has changed. Su Yang, you've become so powerful now. Have you already chosen a profession? Yeah, I just changed professions yesterday, Su Yang replies. And by a stroke of luck, I made some money. He pauses, thinking I spent a lot of loot from spirit hunts, and now the money's endless. The older man grows concerned, showing. Did you join a raid team for dangerous dungeons? Be sure to be careful in those. The monsters are really fierce. You could lose levels or even die if you're not careful. Su Yang reassures him with a confident smile. Don't worry, Grandpa. 
Those monsters are pretty ordinary. They can't hurt me. Still smiling, Su Yang concludes, I'm going to the temple to change professions today, so I'll be off. He leaves the orphanage, heading toward the profession change hall. An elderly man watches him go, puzzled. Change professions? Didn't you just awaken? As Su Yang walks away, a conversation catches his ear. Hey, did you hear? The Spirit Hunting Guild got wiped out yesterday while raiding the Black Dragon boss. Another voice chimes in. I heard there's trouble even in Tianji Pavilion too. Looks like Spirit Hunting was going to teach them a lesson. As he approaches the profession change hall, Su Yang muses. Looks like news of the failed Spirit Hunting raid has spread. He understands that the situation is more complex than it appears. So Spirit Hunting dared to challenge the Black Dragon because they bought that raid strategy from Tianji Pavilion. It's said Tianji Pavilion is a top-tier raid group with many high-level experts. If their strategy failed, there must be trouble brewing. I should be ready for my next opportunity. His thoughts are interrupted when he hears a familiar voice. Su Yang, why is it you again? Why do you keep going to the temple to change professions? Su Yang responds calmly. MK, that's my line. The man laughs dismissively. Oh, I get it. No guild wants you. So you come here every day to try your luck, right? Before Su Yang can respond, Wang Fei emerges, his voice dripping with disdain. I didn't have time to teach you a lesson yesterday. Today? Let's see where you run off to. Sizing up his opponent, Su Yang thinks to himself, This guy is like a fly. Seems I need to teach him a lesson. Wang Fei continues, I let you off yesterday because of guild business. But now I've leveled up and unlocked new skills. Today, I will defend it all. Before he can finish, the tension escalates as Su Yang's fist smashes into his face. The punch connects perfectly, sending Wang Fei crashing backward. Su Yang calmly remarks, There was a fly on your face. Wang Fei's health bar depletes rapidly, showing the overwhelming difference in power. As his companions rush to his aid, panicked and stunned, Su Yang casually addresses them. I killed the fly on his face, but there are still flies on yours. Terrified, the remaining members back off quickly. One of them pleads, No need. You don't have to come after us. We'll handle it ourselves. As the dust settles, Su Yang stands alone, unfazed by the encounter. Brushing it off, he continues his walk. A woman from the temple approaches him, impressed by what she witnessed. Young man, you're really impressive. Is there anything I can help you with? She asks. Remaining composed, Su Yang replies. I'd like to undergo a profession transition. The woman nods and gestures for him to follow. As they walk, she muses silently. He looks like a freshly transitioned student, but judging by the speed and strength he displayed earlier, he's already at the level of a seasoned professional. As Su Yang follows the temple guide, she observes him curiously, thinking he might be a second generation offspring of some prominent family. It's surprising I've never heard of such a young talent before, she thinks. She leads him to a large statue, explaining, This is the transition statue. It will automatically detect your profession and level, then assign you a transition task. Once completed, you can transition. Su Yang stands before the transition statue. It's grandeur impressive. The guide explains, Our transition tasks are generally divided into four levels based on your performance. I recommend you take on a three-star task. Curious, Su Yang asks, why not a four-star task? The guide responds, four-star tasks have a higher difficulty. Although it might sound a bit rude, your profession is relatively weaker as a warrior. The transition task requires you to complete it alone. Choosing a four-star task means if you fail, you'll face the risk of lifelong inability to transition. Su Yang nods thoughtfully. I see. As Su Yang interacts with the transition statue, a screen appears, displaying his transition options. One star transition task kill 10 level 20 ordinary swamp toothed boars. Two star transition task kill 20 level 20 ordinary goblin warriors. Three star transition task kill 30 level 20 ordinary star wild dogs. Finally, a hidden option appears, catching Su Yang's attention. 5-star transition task. Surprised, he reads the details. Location. Cold Moon Forest. Task. Kill 100 level 20 ordinary gray wolves. 
10 level 20 elite savage wolves, and 1 level 20 boss grade gray wolf. Reward. Unlock special transition path demon warrior. Additional 100 points of spirit attribute. Epic grade first tier demon warrior special skill. Curiously, it warns. Transition tasks cannot be completed in a team, and equipment items that have been gifted or traded cannot be used. Su Yang questions the priestess. Wasn't it said there were only four-star tasks? Why are there five-star ones? And what's this temple privilege? The priestess explains. We do indeed have five-star tasks, but their difficulty is extremely high. In the entire Taiyan kingdom, no one has taken on this task for many years. As for the specific privileges, only the high priest of the temple knows. She continues. As for not informing you about the existence of the five-star task, please forgive me. With the advent of the transition era, the strength of each country's upper limit is determined by the transitioners. Rather than let potential professionals reach such a high level of power by mistake, the country would rather help cultivate more high-level professionals. Su Yang nods slightly. I see. The priestess then cautions. This five-star task is incredibly risky. If you fail, you'll be stuck at the first transition for life. Without external help, it will be nearly impossible to pass this alone. Su Yang considers the risks and rewards. These 100 points of spirit attribute and the transition reward of an exclusive skill are crucial for a high-level professional. Plus, there's the temple privilege. The priestess tries to guide him. What do you think? Although the four-star task is tempting, the three-star task is more suited for your profession and won't have any issues. Su Yang smiles. Thank you for your advice. I find it very helpful. The priestess, pleased with his response, replies, You're too kind. This is what we're here for. As she speaks, a notification appears confirming, Ding. You have accepted the five-star transition task. Su Yang is enveloped in a golden light as the countdown begins. Suddenly, the priestess's expression shifts to one of shock and urgency. You, why did you accept the five-star task? Su Yang confidently states, I checked and felt the five-star task was more suitable for me. The priestess, concerned, warns him, but if you fail, he reassures her, don't worry about that. I should be back soon to complete the task. And I'm also very curious about what this temple privilege is all about. As Su Yang walks away, the priestess is left in shock, her thoughts racing. She exclaims, someone dared to accept a five-star task. Hurry and report it to the high priest. Su Yang's bold decision has clearly set off a chain reaction within the temple. The scene shifts to the Eastern Spirit City Teleport Center, currently under maintenance due to energy issues. A system message announces that the teleportation option should be fixed in a few minutes. Swang, encountering the malfunction, reflects, running into a malfunction is unexpected, but I'm not in a hurry. I'll figure out how to navigate the cold moon jungle while I wait. Two women step forward. Chu Yin, a member of the B-grade Guild Reign of Ghosts, comments, Small towns are always troublesome. Even teleport arrays can experience delays. Xiao Qin, stay close to me and don't wander off. Okay. Okay, sister. Xiao Qin replies, then catches sight of Swang. Noticing this, Xu Yin asks, Do you know him? Xiao Qin shyly responds, He's my classmate. We both changed jobs yesterday. Xu Yin raises an eyebrow. Oh, but that's strange. Isn't that teleportation gate leading to the cold moon jungle? It's filled with monsters over level 20. What's a newbie doing there? Just then, an announcement rings out. I'm glad to inform everyone that the teleportation gate is now back to normal operation. Please proceed in an orderly manner. Xiao Qin, worried about Swang, realizes she has to warn him, but it's too late. As Swang steps through the teleportation gate, he finds himself in the cold moon forest. The recommended level is 20 to 30. So this is the cold moon jungle, Swang says, looking around. I don't see anyone else. They've all dispersed to hunt monsters. Well, I guess I will too. Suddenly, a wild wolf monster appears behind him, ready to attack. Swang dodges the attack and observes. Are these the monsters mentioned in the quest? I didn't expect them to appear so soon. He notes the level 20 wolf looking at him menacingly. If you rely only on yourself and don't use trade items or equipment, 
Dealing with these kinds of monsters is tricky. The wolf lunges for another attack, but Swang, armed with the powerful sword he gained from slaying a guild member, remains unfazed. He swings his sword with precision, sending shockwaves through the air. The wild wolf is sliced cleanly in half, its body disintegrating into particles. Swang thinks to himself, are all the drops I've painstakingly acquired? He glances down at his weapon, now equipped with the flame giant sword, a platinum grade epic piece of equipment. Originally, at my current level, I couldn't have used this weapon, but thanks to this gem dropped by spirit hunts, I can wield higher level weapons. He remembers the broken boundless gem that gave him this advantage and briefly flashes back to a moment when he accidentally shattered a bunch of high level gems during drilling. I sold some unnecessary loot for a whopping 1 billion, but now I only have a little over 60 million left, he sighs internally. Still focused on his quest, Swang opens his system menu to check the status of his equipment. He mutters, but as long as I sell this bow, that expenditure won't matter. Maybe Jia Ming will buy it later. He'll be a top sucker. Smiling at the simplicity of the situation, he continues, low-level monsters often have low intelligence. They don't understand the danger they're in, even after being farmed for so long. Activating his silver-grade upgraded shield, a defensive item that can withstand a total of 50,000 points of damage, Swang prepares for the next wave of enemies. The shield's value indicators flash as the system registers the activation. As he steps forward, his aura flares up dramatically. Flames swirl around him, transforming into a fiery vortex that engulfs the area. Swang unleashes his fiery wrath upon the surrounding monsters, the intense heat turning them to ashes almost instantly. Swang scans the area, assessing the situation. The azure wolves that were delivered to my door have been dealt with, but searching for them one by one is becoming troublesome. Looking around, he calls out, just come over here yourselves. He pulls out a monster-attracting stone, a rare item that can attract both ordinary and elite monsters within a large range in the wild. He hurls it into the air, and within moments, a horde of azure wolves rush toward him. Five minutes later, the stone's effect becomes evident as the wolves close in. Confident in his strategy, Swang readies himself. Here they come. The effect is excellent, he says with a smirk. Reaching into his inventory, Swang pulls out a disposable skill scroll. Special grade, Flame Baptism. With a skill level of 70, this scroll deals area of effect flame damage to all enemies around the user. He drinks an intermediate mental potion, boosting his spirit by 150 for the next two hours, and activates the Flame Baptism skill. A massive pillar of fire erupts, incinerating the Azure Wolves on the spot. Notifications flood his system. You killed a normal Azure Wolf. Gained experience. 22. As the last of the wolves perish in the flames, Swang surveys the battlefield. Anything else? There must be well over a hundred of them by now. Did I attract all the monsters in the entire forest? He wonders, noticing more wolves approaching from the distance. Unfazed by their numbers, Swang smirks. Then I'll respond with quantity on my end too. Elsewhere. A group of adventurers walk through the forest. One of them says, What's going on? Aren't there usually plenty of monsters here? I've been wandering for two kilometers and haven't seen a single one. I finally encountered a monster just now, but it didn't even look at me. It ran straight in the other direction. I'm dumbfounded, another adventurer says. Trying to figure out the strange situation, they suddenly realize, I got it. Someone must have used a monster-attracting stone. They've attracted all the monsters to their side. Damn it, who's so shameless, trying to hog all the loot in the wild? The leader of the group nods in agreement. All right, let's go teach him a lesson. Eating alone like that. How shameless. It's not like he's the only one on a mission. The group starts moving towards Swang's location, determined to confront him. Meanwhile, Swang, oblivious to the approaching adventurers, calmly takes out a scroll. A massive wave of flame surges outward, engulfing the surrounding wolves in intense fire. Notifications pop up, confirming that Swang has killed multiple Azure Wolves and gained experience for each kill. Seeing the devastating flames, the adventurers stop in their tracks, eyes wide with shock. Damn it! This kind of magical fluctuation, 
Only a level 3 mage could pull this off, right? One of them mutters in disbelief. Realizing they are outmatched, another adventurer nervously says, Which big shot is coming to low-level areas to farm materials? They practically cleared out the cold moon jungle. With the flames still raging in the background, one of the adventurers sheepishly says, Guys, I just remembered there's something going on at home today. The others quickly agree, making excuses to leave the area. As the adventurers retreat, Swan looks around at the aftermath. Okay, the grunt work is done. Only the boss is left. He stands in the middle of a vast, circular clearing, the aftermath of his battle evident around him. The system displays his progress. He has successfully killed 100 Azure Wolves and 20 Rampaging Wolves. Now, only the boss remains, the Alpha Wolf King. Swan walks confidently toward the Cold Moon Cave, the boss's habitat looming before him. A dark cave pulses with danger. The system warns that the boss is recommended for teams of three or more at level 20. Meanwhile, a group of adventurers, led by Jia Ming, reaches the entrance of the cave. We finally made it to the boss's cave. Are you guys ready? Jia Ming, a level 22 mage, asks his companions. Li San, a level 21 defense warrior, reassures him, Don't worry, Jia Ming. You bought me that basic strength potion, so I should be able to hold out longer. Jia Wu, a level 21 jungle archer, adds, I just changed jobs. I haven't tried out the new skills yet, so I'm not sure how strong they are. Their conversation shifts to the potential rewards of defeating the boss. The Alpha Wolf King is sure to drop the Alpha Wolf King's crystal core. With it, I can forge my silver rank staff, which will last me until level 40, Jang says confidently. He instructs, Li San, you tank in the front. Su and I will focus on dealing damage from behind. We're ready to go when you are. But just as they are about to proceed, Jang suddenly halts. Wait, someone's coming. They peer around a corner. What's up? Zhang An asks, concerned. Damn, are they here to steal the loot? Li San adds, worried. Jia Wu observes Suan closely and smirks. Wait, this kid looks like a student. Probably just got lost. Shouldn't we remind him? Li San suggests. Jang quickly dismisses the idea. Are you stupid? This guy's offering himself as bait for us. When he takes the first wave of the boss's attacks, we'll swoop in and reap the rewards. Isn't that great? Li San, realizing the plan, grins widely. Big brother, you're brilliant. As they prepare to execute their plan, a tremor shakes the ground. What's happening? One of them yells, looking around. An earthquake, mutters another adventurer, feeling the tremor grow stronger. Suang steps forward confidently, his presence unwavering. Suddenly, a deep growl echoes through the area, and the ground shakes violently as the Alpha Wolf King, a massive and menacing beast, emerges from the shadows. The air around it crackles with energy, signaling its enraged state. The system alerts Suong. The Alpha Wolf King has become enraged due to the deaths of many wolves in the Cold Moon Jungle. All attributes increased by 30%. Towering and furious, the Alpha Wolf King lets out a deafening roar, its eyes burning with rage as it charges towards Suong. The adventurers still hiding watch in shock. Li San, Fear evident in his voice, exclaims, Damn, how did this boss suddenly become enraged? Should we still fight? I'm scared. Their leader snaps, Damn it, don't act like a coward. We've been waiting for this. If we don't take the chance now, we might not get another shot at the boss. But when that kid gets killed by the boss, we'll take over and grab the aggro. One of them adds, nodding in agreement. Just as they prepare to act, they see something unbelievable. Suang, unfazed by the Alpha Wolf King's enraged state, grips his sword tightly. With a powerful swing, he unleashes a torrent of flames that crash into the Alpha Wolf King. The beast roars in agony as the flames engulf its massive form, overpowering its enraged state. Boss defeated. Alpha Wolf King. Experience gained. Plus 130,000. Suang glances at the progress display. Task progress. Level 20 boss, Alpha Wolf King, complete. A new prompt appears, confirming his success. 
All five-star class transfer tasks completed. Please return to the class transfer shrine to finalize the transfer. Standing among the fiery aftermath, his sword still glowing with residual heat from the battle, Suong smirks. Too easy, he says, the words leaving his lips with calm confidence. After the intense battle, Suong surveys the area, illuminated by the magical cores dropped by the boss. Jang, glancing at the drops, mutters, These are just small scraps. They'll only fetch a little at the shop. Suong picks up the valuable Azure Wolf King Crystal Core, a rare item that can enhance silver grade weapons. A sense of accomplishment washes over him. Easy and pleasant, he says with a smirk. Tom head back, as Suong begins to walk away. Confident in his victory, he doesn't notice the group of adventurers still hiding nearby. Suong's grip tightens around the Azure Wolf King Crystal Core as he hears a voice behind him. Boss, if you don't want that Azure Wolf King Crystal Core, can I? Suong turns slowly. Who just said they were going to use me as bait? The adventurer, realizing his mistake, stammers. Huh? No, no, not me. I would never think of such a thing. Suong's expression darkens, and with a flick of his wrist, he crushes the crystal in his hand. If you want it, get it yourself by your own ability. As Suong walks away, one of the adventurers, still trembling from the encounter, nervously laughs. You scared me. Luckily, I didn't make a move earlier. Another adventurer, still in disbelief, whispers, Am I dreaming? This is insane. He just one-shot the boss. Who exactly is he? Meanwhile, Suong arrives at a grand tower, where he meets the priestess awaiting his return. You're back so soon? Is there something else you want to ask? The priestess inquires. Suong shakes his head slightly. I completed the mission, and I'm ready to advance my class. She nods in acknowledgement. Please wait a moment. I'll assist you. As Suong waits, the priestess, shocked, mutters to herself. You completed the five-star class advancement mission? Yeah, Suong replies casually, his tone nonchalant. The priestess, astonished, checks the details again. No way. You just received the mission this morning, and it's only been a few hours. How is this possible? She whispers to herself. Even the most skilled players take days, sometimes weeks, to finish, and this guy, he managed it in mere hours without breaking a sweat. Realizing she was thinking out loud, the priestess quickly regains her composure. Sorry for being impolite. Please follow me. Suong, with his usual confident demeanor, simply nods and follows her toward the class advancement statue. As Suong steps forward, the statue begins to glow with an intense radiant light. The air hums with energy as the class advancement process initiates. Class advancement mission check in progress. Defeat. 100 normal Azure Wolves, 10 elite Rampaging Wolves, and 1 Alpha Wolf King. Mission check complete. Class advancement task passed. Suddenly, beams of light shoot from the statue, enveloping Suong. He feels a surge of powerful energy entering his body, filling him with newfound strength. The power! Suong exclaims, feeling the transformation taking place. The light around him intensifies, swirling in different hues. The system announces, Class Advancement Aura is a special reward for players who complete the Class Advancement mission. Depending on the level of the mission, the color and attribute bonus of the aura will vary. As the details flash before Suong's eyes, he sees the various aura options. White Aura, a mere 2% boost for 1-star class advancements. Green Aura, a 4% bonus for 2 stars. Blue Aura, a respectable 6% for 3 stars. Purple Aura, a rare 10% for mastering 4-star challenges. But Suong is here for nothing less than the best. After a moment, the system announces, Orange Aura, the pinnacle of achievement, granting a 25% attribute bonus for completing a 5-star class advancement. Suddenly, the world around Suong explodes in vibrant orange light. The energy surges through his body like a tidal wave, filling him with immense power. Player Suong has completed a 5-star class advancement task. Orange Aura activated. Attribute bonus, 25%. With newfound strength, Suong stands in the chamber, the orange aura blazing around him. 
a testament to his incredible achievement. The system isn't done yet. Magic Warrior, a special warrior class proficient in close combat physical skills and various spell skills. Its comprehensive strength is formidable. The words sink in, and Suong feels the power coursing through his veins, ready to be unleashed. The system drives it home. Level up, level up. As the light of the orange aura fades, Suong stands in the center of a smoldering crater, his body surging with newfound strength. The system's voice rings out. First class complete. Level cap raised to level 40. Suong feels a rush of power as his attributes skyrocket. Strength and spirit increase by 90 each, speed increase by 30. Astonished by the sudden surge in his abilities, his stats display before him. He grins, unable to contain his excitement. I instantly rose to level 34. With the addition of the orange aura and the bonus from the flame greatsword, these stats are way beyond what I expected at this level. It's too awesome. The system rewards him further. Receive task rewards. Epic level skill book from Magic Warrior. A glowing book materializes in Suang's hand, radiating intense energy. He examines it closely, realizing its significance. Epic level magic blade. Condenses magic power into weapons, dealing full magic damage. The damage increases with the rise in strength and spirit attributes. Suang marvels at the epic magic blade skill, watching the energy swirl and pulse around his weapon. What a great skill, he thinks. It can be controlled by my mind and can transform at will, not limited by appearance. It's useful for both close combat and casting ranged attacks. As he swings the magic blade, it effortlessly slices through the air, creating an intense arc of purple energy that leaves a trail of light. The sheer power is exhilarating, and Suong feels an overwhelming sense of satisfaction. The most important thing is that this skill can grow, he muses. It's like having a family heirloom weapon that will never be outdated, very cost-effective. Reflecting on his journey, Suong thinks this five-star class advancement mission was truly worth it. The rewards are incomparable to other missions. I must continue to complete more five-star class missions in the future. The priestess cuts through his thoughts. Congratulations on completing the five-star requirement. From now on, your name will be engraved on the temple monument. You've also become a VIP guest of the Class Advancement Temple. Suong smiles at the unexpected reward. The recognition of his efforts only fuels his determination further. By the way, he asks, turning to the priestess, what privileges do VIPs have? The priestess. Visibly impressed, responds with a slight smile. Wait a moment, let me confirm for you. Before she can answer, a commanding voice interrupts. There's no need for that. Suong turns to see a striking figure approaching, a tall woman with an air of authority and grace. She carries a staff that radiates power, her mere presence demanding respect. Regarding the VIP matters, let me explain, she says, her voice steady and composed. Introducing herself, she continues, Hello, my name is Bai Ling, currently serving as a senior priest at the East Spirit City Class Advancement Temple. The priestess, surprised, asks, Senior priest? Why did you personally come to see him? Bai Ling smiles faintly, her gaze never leaving Suan. Such an important guest naturally needs to be received by me personally. You can step back now, Suang thinks to himself. A senior priest is almost equivalent to the person in charge of the temple. To think someone of this status would personally receive me. All right, the priestess replies, obeying by Ling's orders, though she silently laments, I haven't gotten the cute guy's contact info yet. Bai Ling extends her hand towards Suang, her eyes locking onto his with a calm, assuring gaze. It's not convenient to talk here. Please relax. I'll take you to the VIP room for a more detailed discussion. She says, her tone authoritative yet inviting. Suang hesitates for only a moment before nodding, recognizing the opportunity. All right, he responds, accepting her hand. The moment their hands touch, a bright blue circle of energy forms around them. Before Suang can fully process it, the world around him begins to blur. As everything comes back into focus, 
Suong finds himself standing in an elegantly decorated room, softly lit by a crystal chandelier. The atmosphere is calm and serene, a stark contrast to the bustling temple outside. It's actually a spatial transfer, he marvels, thinking to himself. A priest from a third-tier city's temple can master such an advanced skill? No wonder the class advancement temple's strength is unimaginable. Noticing his contemplation, Bai Ling comments humbly, I'm not that strong. I simply borrow the power of the temple statue. A faint smile plays on her lips. On the contrary, your abilities are more surprising. According to the records, there has never been a five-star class advancement in East Spirit City. The most recent one in the region was 10 years ago. Suang reflects on this, realizing the significance. Heaven Spirit City is superior to East Spirit City, with a much higher development level. Even there, only one person completed a five-star mission in the past decade. The value of this advancement is much higher than I thought. Bai Ling shifts to a formal tone, preparing to inform him. According to the temple's rules, those who complete a first-class five-star advancement can enjoy the following privileges. She raises her hand, and a golden light emanates from her palm as she lists the benefits. 1. A monthly allowance of 10 million national currency. She begins. 2. Sun's Black Gold Identity Certification, allowing an 80% discount on shopping and transactions. Suang's eyes widen at the information. Damn, being a temple VIP is amazing. The 10 million monthly allowance alone is great, but having black gold status with an 80% discount is incredible. Just spending 100 million nets a 20 million profit. The allowance is almost negligible compared to that. Impressed by the privileges, Suang thinks, the class advancement temple is truly generous with its rewards. Bai Ling continues, her tone professional. The allowance and black gold identity certification have been automatically connected to your identity through the class advancement statue. No further action is required on your part. Additionally, you may choose to join any A-level guild in the city. Suang processes this information and asks, is joining a guild mandatory? Bai Ling shakes her head slightly. Not exactly, but personal abilities are limited. Joining a guild provides buffs, enhancements, and team protection. It's usually the better choice. Suan contemplates the pros and cons of being a solo player. Indeed, solo players are easy targets, especially someone like me who levels up quickly. I can dominate players of the same level, but higher level ones could be dangerous. Having a guild for backing might be useful. He nods slightly, considering his options. But my goals aren't limited to just East Spirit City. Joining a guild could be a stepping stone to building my own power and one day becoming a king who dominates the region. Bai Ling observes his contemplative expression. So, what guilds are available? Suang asks. Bai Ling responds promptly. Currently, there are two A-level guilds in East Spirit City. Considering various factors, I think the most suitable for you is, she pauses, ensuring his full attention before continuing, the Spirit Hunter Guild. Suang looks up a bit surprised. Ah, isn't there another guild? Bai Ling nods calmly. The other one is the Phantom Cloud Guild, which competes with the Spirit Hunter Guild. They're strong but more low-key. Suang considers his options for a moment before making his decision. Okay, I'll choose Phantom Cloud. Bai Ling's voice carries a hint of curiosity. Huh, why? Suang shrugs nonchalantly, offering little explanation. Bai Ling nods, accepting his choice. I understand. I'll handle the membership procedures for you. But before that, there's something you need to know. Her lips curl into a slight smile as she reveals. Phantom Cloud is a guild entirely composed of women. Suang pauses in surprise, his mind racing as he tries to process this unexpected twist. The scene shifts to the Phantom Cloud Guild, a grand structure standing tall in the city. Inside, a woman sits on a swing, looking bored. So boring. There's nothing interesting to do, she mutters. She is introduced as Lin Yuyu, level 85, leader of the B-Rank Guild, Phantom Cloud. With a hint of annoyance, Lin Yuyu replies to someone, you're not even in your own guild, yet you come running here every day to relax, and you still have the nerve to complain. The other person dismisses the concern. 
Guild matters are just too troublesome. I don't really feel like dealing with them. Another woman walks into the room, her tone firm as she addresses Lin Yuyu. But you can't just skip out on guild duties without notice. You have to at least greet new members when they join. A new member nervously enters the room, her voice shaky. Hello, she introduces herself. Guild leader, my name is Suyo Yin, and my profession is Ice Elementalist. Lin Yuyu, still lounging on the swing, assesses the new arrival and casually comments. Hmm, not bad. Quite cute indeed. You're approved. Suyo, startled, exclaims, cute. Before the situation can settle, someone suddenly reacts with shock. What? They exclaim, staring at a screen that has just appeared. A guy suddenly joined our guild. Confusion spreads among the members as they try to grasp what's happening. Baffled by the sudden turn of events, someone demands, What's going on? What happened now? The guild is in turmoil, with everyone discussing the sudden arrival. I asked, but no one replied. Let me see who joined us, another member says. They gather around, staring at the screen in disbelief. Wow, it's actually a guy, one of them exclaims, shock evident. Another member, confused, asks, a guy, how did this happen? The chat buzzes with questions and speculations. Guild leader, come out and explain, one message demands. Where's the newcomer? Why isn't he speaking? Adds another. One member tries to make sense of it, asking, did your guild set a restriction to only accept females? Could it be a mistake from your subordinates? The explanation soon follows. No, this person was assigned by the temple, Advancement Temple. He completed a five-star transcendent mission and was recognized as a VIP by the Transcendence Temple, allowing him to freely choose to join an A-rank guild. I didn't have the right to refuse. This revelation leaves them impressed. A five-star transcendent mission? Someone actually completed that insane task. One member murmurs in awe. But why didn't he choose the Spirit Hunters? Another wonders aloud. Still skeptical, a member suggests. Who knows? Anyway... Let's put this matter of Suyo aside for now. I'll arrange to meet him. Even if he joins the guild, if he causes trouble, I can find a way to kick him out. As Suyo's name is mentioned, another classmate gasps, Suyo? One of the guild members leans forward. You know him? The other member nods. I do. I have a friend named Suyo, but he just transcended yesterday. You should be at level one like me. Seems like it's just the same name. Their conversation is interrupted as another member rushes in exclaiming, Guild leader, I just received confirmed news. The Spirit Hunters Guild got wiped out in the Black Dragon Dungeon. The revelation shocks everyone. What? Though I'm not sure what those Spirit Hunters were up to, their wipeout is a fact. The scene introduces Meng Shue, level 95, affiliated with the Phantom Cloud Guild. As she delivers this critical information, the Spirit Hunters got wiped out too. It seems we need to be more cautious with our strategy for the Great Forest Raid. Also, Xiao Ming's weapon exploded. I checked the auction house, and there's already a Storm's Call listed for auction. Currently, there's only one bidder in the entire Tianling city, most likely from the Spirit Hunters. Meng Shue smiles mischievously. Guess what I did then? You shouldn't raise the price too much, warns a guild member. Exactly, Meng Shue grins. I kept raising the bid, driving the price up to over a dozen billion, causing a heavy loss for the spirit hunters. Lin Yu laughs. Well done, Sister Meng. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Xiao Ming exclaims with determination. Black Dragon Eye Switch, I'm your sworn enemy. His guild leader, frustrated, says, the seller can't be reached through private messages. 13.4 billion. That's a huge hit to my guild funds. As he walks with his companions, he reflects on the situation. The news about Xiao Ming's weapon exploding must have spread. This malicious bidding was definitely premeditated. He tries to motivate his teammate. Get up! How long do you want to be a tortoise? Xiao Ming reacts angrily as he's kicked. Ouch, boss! Don't kick me! The leader then states, the equipment has been bought back. Now it's time to get back to business. The group proceeds, determined to move forward despite the setback. As they enter a grand hall, the tension is palpable. One of the members, clearly frustrated, exclaims, Are you saying our strategy was flawed? What a joke! Zhou Tai, 
a level 110 five-star bloodthirsty warrior, sits at the head of the table, exuding authority. He responds confidently, We've cleared the Black Dragon Fortress secret dungeon at least five times. Based on that, we summarized this strategy. We meticulously verified every step. There shouldn't be any issues. Are you sure you followed our strategy step by step? Looking frustrated, the other replies, absolutely. We followed the Heavenly Mechanism Pavilion strategy, but the behavior pattern of that Black Dragon boss is really problematic. Completely different from the description in the strategy, Tai retorts, Of course, I'm not questioning your professionalism, but I think you might have made some errors. Did it lead to the sacrifice of my battle gauntlets and core weapon in that once-in-a-lifetime trap? That wouldn't be possible. Anger flares in another member who snaps. A bunch of useless people. You've been fed my strategies, yet you still manage to get wiped out by a simple trash boss. What's the use of you now? A guild member glares and says, Sir, please watch your words. He retorts angrily, Train harder if you're weak. If you can't handle losing, don't play. Got it? Jotai cuts in his tone commanding. Enough, Lu Chi. Hold your tongue. He then explains, Heavenly Mechanism Pavilion has always placed the utmost importance on integrity and will never sell any incorrect information. Therefore, I'll arrange for the exploration team to retrace the steps in the Black Dragon Fortress. If there are indeed errors in the strategy, all the losses incurred by your spirit hunters will be borne by us. If the strategy is correct, then it only means that Lei, your guild leader, made a mistake somewhere, and it's not our concern. Is this arrangement acceptable? The guild leader considers the offer and responds. In that case, I'll trouble you with it tomorrow. The four of us will take Lei to the dungeon to investigate. Is that okay? One of the members, Jiang Kachin, level 108 and a five-star holy healer, responds affirmatively. Yes, Zhang Zhen, level 104 and a five-star mountain barrier master, also agrees, stating, I have no objections. Suddenly, a mysterious dark energy envelopes the area, and a figure emerges from the shadows. Startled by the unexpected appearance, someone exclaims, Who are you? The figure quickly reassures the group. Everyone, don't panic. This is Mr. Chin Luen from the headquarters of the Heavenly Mechanism Pavilion. Surprised, Zhou Tai asks, Is he a big shot from the headquarters? Chin Luen, level 115, a five-star necromancer affiliated with the Heavenly Mechanism Pavilion, steps forward with an air of authority. He addresses Zhou Tai directly. Zhou Tai, I should have told you that you need to inform me if you're going to the Black Dragon Fortress, right? Zhou Tai quickly apologizes. Sorry, Master Chen. This is mainly our exploration team's follow-up service. We didn't mean to trouble you. Chen Luan cuts him off. No need for explanations. Tomorrow I'll go with you. Zhou Tai, acknowledging the decision, responds. All right. I understand. Chen Luan revels in his dark thoughts. Such delicious souls, he muses. Each harvest makes my treasures even stronger. Even if I kill it thousands of times, it's not enough. Dear Black Dragon, wait for me to reap you. Observing from a distance, another member mutters in frustration. I can't stand this old pervert. One of the others tries to reassure him. Five five-star professionals, plus the expert from the Heavenly Mechanism Pavilion headquarters. There's no way we'll have trouble with a fourth-ranked dungeon. We're definitely safe now. However, his expression darkens as he thinks to himself. If they successfully kill the Black Dragon, that's fine. But if they get wiped out, they deserve it. Whether it's a genuine mistake or a fake one, these self-righteous strategy groups should pay some price for the losses on my side. He sneers inwardly. Just kill each other, Black Dragon and Exploration Team. Meanwhile, Su Yang lies on his bed, stretching casually. Wow. Those A-rank spirit hunters are relentless, he thinks. They've been bidding nonstop, either out of luxury or just to annoy me. Curious, he checks his screen and sees a new notification. New bid on Storm's Call, Diamond Tier Weapon, now selling at the auction house. Someone bid. Let's see, he mutters, eyes widening as he scrolls through the endless bids. What the heck? These two must have a serious grudge. They bid over a dozen times. The screen reveals a heated bidding war. Ice which bids 500 million. 
Evil Noble counters with 500 million plus 1 Yuan. Ice Witch raises to 600 million. Evil Noble responds with 600 million and another Yuan. It escalates until Ice Witch drops a final bid. 14 billion, 33 million. Holy crap, over 14 billion. Su Yang exclaims, stunned. A prompt appears. End of evaluation. It has exceeded the reserve price by 10%. Do you confirm the sale? Grinning, he quickly taps yes, thinking of course I confirm. Thanks to that ice switch for driving up the price. The screen updates. Transaction confirmed. Item. Storm's call. Registered under Evil Noble. Total amount. 14.55 billion. Your revenue share has been deposited. Smirking, he muses, from a measly 10 gold coins to a fourth-ranked Dungeon Raider's ultimate weapon, and I sold it effortlessly. Distinguished member? Huh? Now that's how you show off. Su Yang decides to take a break. I'm looking forward to another part-time job tomorrow. This is the life of convenience. After experiencing this privilege, who would want to endlessly grind monsters like I did before? He drifts off to sleep, the time on the clock showing seven. Suddenly, a notification pops up, signaling the cool-down completion of his next task. Wake up, he says. Here it comes. The screen shows a new challenge. It's from the renowned exploration team, known as the Dungeon Killers, who have conquered numerous dungeons and created strategies for them. The screen prompts him with a decision. Complete this part-time job challenge. Yes or no? Su Yang hesitates, contemplating the situation. There are many five-star professionals above level 100 in my guild. They should have already cleared this dungeon. But this sudden visit, is it related to the Spirit Hunter's wipeout incident? Weighing his options, he smirks and says, Regardless of your intentions, since you've only brought six people, you must be extremely confident in your abilities. Well then, I won't hold back. Confirm the connection. He watches as the screen processes his command. Cross-connection confirmation in progress. Connection successful. As the connection completes, an imposing dragon, surrounded by flames, emerges. Brimming with excitement, Su Yang declares, Let's begin my second part time challenge. The scene shifts as Su Yang, now transformed into a massive, fearsome dragon, emerges from a fiery landscape. The elite monsters that died before have been resurrected, but it's not surprising. After all, the Black Dragon Fortress is only a diamond-level secret realm, which can be refreshed repeatedly. Only secret realms at Tier 3 or above are non-replicable. An elf sits in a dimly lit chamber, observing the unfolding events. She glances at Su Yang's dragon form and questions, What are you up to again? Her expression is thoughtful as she continues. From the Black Dragon's perspective, this fight looks like a beautiful performance. But how is this even open suddenly when it wasn't completed before? The Black Dragon should only act according to established rules. In his dragon form, Su Yang mutters, Let me see who's in the exploration team. The view reveals a formidable group approaching, led by familiar faces. Su Yang observes with interest, noting, Sure enough, there are five fifth level professionals. Lu Shan from the Spirit Hunters is here too. Looks like they're cleaning up after the previous mess. Their after-sales service is impressive. Su Yang strategizes. Their combat power is much stronger than last time, but as long as they don't get their hands on the Dragon Slayer's heart, they shouldn't cause me much harm, right? He turns to his minions and orders. You guys take the other soldiers and deal with the intruders outside. As the battle begins, one of the intruders assesses the situation. There haven't been any anomalies, and the strategy content matches up. Could it be that the spirit hunters didn't deceive us after all? Another intruder, focusing on the battle, comments, I think they probably messed up on their own, deliberately looking for trouble. The leader instructs, don't be careless. Keep up the barrier and take down the boss steadily. As the dust starts to fly, another member of the group, filled with foreboding, asks, what's the situation over there? The air grows thick with tension as the group prepares for the fight. Su Yang's forces launch a full-scale assault, and one of the intruders exclaims, It was the same last time, but now there are even more monsters. Despite the surprise, the leader remains calm. Unexpected, but this level of threat can affect our exploration team, he says, quickly devising a strategy. Form up. 
I'll draw the aggro of the elite monsters while the rest focus on eliminating the small fries, then concentrate on my target. The battle intensifies, and the team unleashes their powerful abilities against the hordes of enemies. After a series of devastating attacks, they manage to wipe out the remaining foes. The leader surveys the battlefield and remarks, wasted a few minutes. Let's continue forward. He reflects on the group's performance, thinking truly worthy of five rank experts. Their strength seems like immortals descending to experience life. Even that mysterious looking mage hasn't made a move yet. This isn't simple. I'll have to take action myself. Suddenly, Su Yang, in his dragon form, begins to move with purpose. One of the monsters comments, Lord Outaw is taking action again. Wait, why did I say again? Another creature, confused, replies, you know, but why does this seem so familiar? As the group advances, one of the intruders remarks, truly a top-notch strategy team. The intensity of the strategy they're using isn't reflected in the guides. Zaitai nods in agreement. Indeed, we'll look into it after this instance ends. Chen Lun, hovering over the battlefield with dark energy swirling around him, retorts menacingly. Young man's got some nerve questioning me. Say a couple more words, and maybe I'll have another specimen for my collection. Lu Shan, stunned, shouts, what? Sensing the tension, Zhou Tai quickly intervenes. Master, please, don't look like that. You're scaring the clients. Let's all calm down. Despite the brief tension, the group remains focused on their mission. The Spirit Hunt Guild leader reflects, there was a moment just now that made me think this really is a done deal. Jotai adds, this old fogey has mental issues. Since we're here, why don't we make him work? Are we going to let him stay this arrogant in the future? As the group advances, Lu Shan's frustration grows. Gloat all you want for now. Let's see if you're still laughing after you meet the Black Dragon. Suddenly, the atmosphere shifts drastically as Lu Shan shouts, the Black Dragon. Panic spreads quickly. The boss actually acted ahead of schedule. How is this possible? Amidst the chaos, doubts begin to surface. Is this a bug? Spirit Hunter didn't deceive us? Jotai quickly takes charge, giving orders with urgency. Form up. Lao Jang, maintain the mountain barrier. Lu Qi, be ready to teleport at any moment. Healers, prioritize healing. Liwei, keep my health at 30%. Understood? The team responds, bracing themselves for the impending battle. In the midst of the tension, a new notification pops up. Skill info. Berserker talent. Significantly increases all attributes when health drops below 30%, reduces damage taken. The intense battle begins, with the dragon confidently taunting. Let me handle you guys. Exploration team, as the fight rages on, the screen flashes with damage indicators showing a total damage dealt of just over 700,000. Despite the team's relentless assault, Suong quickly senses something is wrong, thinking, these damage numbers don't add up. The dragon observes the ongoing battle and mutters, as expected, even five-star professionals can't deal much damage with my damage reduction talents. An attacker analyzes the situation, noting, this black dragon has damage reduction buffs. Keep chipping away. Suddenly, Suong taunts, can you guess what I'll do next? The team below quickly realizes the shift in strategy, exclaiming, Damn it. The boss switched targets to the back line. With a sudden burst of speed, Suong initiates a powerful move, Dragon's Charge, rushing towards his new targets. One of the team members desperately tries to react, thinking, not so fast. However, as the move unfolds, Suong remarks, What a waste, such a good opportunity to eliminate the squishy back line. Suong is suddenly attacked from behind. The attacker seizes the moment and declares, Your vulnerabilities are all behind you. Taste my strike. The attacker charges up, with stats showing increased attack speed and critical rate, followed by a powerful blow. As the attack lands, the attacker yells, Die. The impact seems heavy, with the damage numbers flashing on the screen, but the expected effect is lacking. Shocked by the results, the attacker thinks, my most powerful execution skill, Shadow Stab. This can take down even small bosses in Starlight-tier instances with millions of HP. 
How come it's dealing so little damage to a Diamond Tier instance boss? Is the damage reduction this outrageous? Unfazed by the attack, Suan counters with a deadly response. Now it's your turn to reveal your vulnerabilities. Go to hell. He smirks, taunting. It's really good luck you survived with a sliver of health. But how many times can you rely on such luck? As the battle rages on, a desperate cry echoes through the battlefield. Liuiz. Amidst the chaos, one of the team members realizes how close they were to losing a comrade. That was close. Just a thread of health left. Luckily, I shielded him. Old Jang. Heal him quickly. The urgency in his voice is palpable as he calls for immediate help. Old Jang rushes to their side, but his attention is abruptly drawn to something ominous. He gasps, eyes widening in shock as the black dragon begins to charge a devastating attack. Horrified, he thinks this move, could it be breath of annihilation? But isn't that supposed to be the ultimate skill, used only when health is below 70%? Why is it being used now, right at the beginning? As the Black Dragon's breath of annihilation erupts, the battlefield is consumed in a fiery inferno. The sheer force of the attack is overwhelming, and the team struggles to comprehend the situation. One of them, still alive but shaken, notes the abnormality. Why isn't this boss following the usual pattern? Another adds with concern, and it seems to have gained some intelligence understanding our tactics, and exploiting our vulnerabilities. Desperation seeps into their voices as they continue to analyze the situation. Stop joking. This is a stone-tier boss. Its behavior patterns should be fixed. How could it suddenly grow a brain? A notification appears, highlighting the ultimate skill of Mountain Barrier Master. Reduces damage taken by allied forces inside the structure by 50%, continuously restores health. Lasts for 10 seconds. Cooldown time, 360 seconds. But even with these abilities, one of them realizes the grim reality. A bunch of useless trash. In the end, I have to take action myself. A voice from behind calls out an alarm. Master Chun, as the necromancer decides to intervene directly, aware that the situation is spiraling out of control. Master Chun stands in a dark, forbidding aura summoning a terrifying spell. The air crackles with dark energy as he intones. In the endless abyss of the underworld, awaken the ancient soul. Follow my will, obey my call, and use your majesty and power to bring destruction to this world. With a chilling command, he calls out, Come out, Bone Dragon Mathis. From the shadows, a monstrous bone dragon emerges. Its skeletal frame glowing with a menacing purple light. Suang, watching closely, thinks this guy is he actually a necromancer? The situation becomes even more dangerous as this formidable new threat is unleashed, raising the stakes of the battle. Su Yang explained that necromancers are extremely rare, special occupations. It is said that high-level necromancers can even summon undead creatures as powerful as dungeon bosses. With a mixture of intrigue and caution, Su Yang wonders, will the strength of this bone dragon be comparable to mine? The necromancer commands, go, tear apart your enemies. The bone dragon, under the necromancer's control, charges at Su Yang with ferocious power. Su Yang is taken aback by the sheer force of the bone dragon's attack, thinking, such immense power. This seemingly fragile creature actually possesses such strength. As the bone dragon clashes with Su Yang, the impact is tremendous. Feeling the pressure, Su Yang roars, get lost. The two colossal beings continue their intense battle, with the bone dragon refusing to back down. The battle intensifies as the bone dragon and Su Yang unleash their ultimate moves. The bone dragon, under the necromancer's control, roars, cloud corpse inferno, while Su Yang counters with a powerful breath of destruction. The two attacks collide, creating a massive explosion of energy and fire. Su Yang smirks, taunting, Are you trying to intimidate me with your ultimate moves? The battlefield is engulfed in flames as the attacks clash. Lean, watching the spectacle, marvels, to actually clash head-on with the boss's ultimate move. I've never seen such a scene before. Although Chin Luan is very annoying, his strength is genuine. 
Su Yang remains unfazed by the intensity of the Bone Dragon's attack, thinking its breath is indeed powerful. But I haven't exerted my full strength yet. As the flames subside, Su Yang stands tall, looking down at the battlefield with a confident expression. He scoffs, is that all? Su Yang is shocked as he witnesses the Bone Dragon, thought to be defeated, start to reassemble itself. What? He exclaims in disbelief. The creature's bones snap back together, and the undead beast rises again. This thing can still resurrect? Su Yang mutters in astonishment. The bone dragon fully reforms, its eyes glowing ominously. The necromancer cackles, reveling in his power. As long as there are fresh corpses, rise and continue to fight for me. Bone dragon. Truly the skill of a necromancer, Su Yang thinks. Now revived and even more aggressive, the bone dragon launches itself at Su Yang with renewed vigor. As they clash, Su Yang sees the incoming damage indicators. Physical damage 594,000. Magic damage is staggering 1,174,000. Total damage dealt over 1,700,000. The damage numbers are high, and Su Yang realizes the severity of the situation. This damage is much higher than that of a class changer. If this continues, I might lose. He begins to retreat, thinking urgently, I need to catch my breath quickly. It's about to catch up. As the battle rages on, Su Yang notices something strange. Huh, he mutters to himself, watching as the bone dragon struggles to stay airborne. This guy, it can't fly? The necromancer, realizing the issue, commands, troublesome, Attack from a distance. Su Yang smirks, dodging the incoming attacks with ease. How could such an attack hit me? He taunts, feeling confident as he soars higher, out of reach. And at this height, the summoner himself is defenseless. The necromancer, sensing danger, shouts in panic. Bone dragon, come back immediately and protect me. But it's too late. Su Yang reveals his cunning plan with a sly grin. You've been fooled. The necromancer, realizing his mistake, can only gasp as the tables turn in this high-stakes aerial battle. Su Yang, in his dragon form, unleashes a devastating attack, Die. He uses the dragon's charge in its ultimate form, hurling an enormous amount of power at his opponent. The necromancer, Chun Luen, is caught off guard, screaming in pain as his HP drops to 20%. Su Yang, observing the necromancer's resilience, is surprised, thinking, so much HP left? I thought this squishy mage would have been gone in a second. Down below, the team quickly regroups. Quickly heal up and shield. Retreat to a safe area. One of the team members commands. The team responds swiftly. Yes. They form a defensive barrier, sharing the damage and reducing it by 50%. It's that Joe Tai again. If he hadn't been timely in assisting, there would have been casualties by now. Master Chen anxiously asks, Has LCY not returned yet? Be patient, Master. I calculated the time. He should be here any moment now. Su Yang, recognizing the absence of one of the assassins, thinks LCY, that assassin, I didn't even notice he was missing. Could he be retrieving the heart of the dragon? The moment is tense as one of the team members announces, Captain LCY is back. Their hope rekindles as they prepare for the next phase of their battle. The team, brimming with confidence, declares, This time, we're winning for sure. But Su Yang, with a foreboding tone, counters, That's what you think. Just as the team begins to celebrate prematurely, LCY triumphantly displays a glowing artifact, proclaiming, I've retrieved the heart of the dragon and completed the mission. Su Yang, in his towering dragon form, acknowledges the success with a stern. Well done. The glowing heart of the dragon pulsates with power, leaving the onlookers in shock. With renewed confidence, Su Yang exclaims, You despicable schemer, thanks to my preparations. Victory will. But before he can finish, something unexpected happens. Su Yang suddenly feels a jolt. Huh? What is this? He asks in confusion, as the energy from the heart of the dragon surges uncontrollably. His form is enveloped in a blinding light as system notifications flash urgently, detecting uncontrollable factors. 
Diamond Tier, Secret Realm, Black Dragon Fortress. Level change imminent. The realm itself begins to shift, escalating toward the Starlight Tier, signaling an impending transformation that leaves everyone in shock. A thunderous roar echoes across the realm. In a bustling city, its inhabitants look around in alarm. What's happening? One asks, while another questions, an earthquake. Amidst the confusion, a priest is consulted. Master priest, there's an unusual surge in spiritual energy. What could this be? The priest, with a furrowed brow, replies, I sense a powerful aura emerging from some hidden realm. I never expected it to affect the real world. The situation grows increasingly dire as the boundaries between realms blur, leaving everyone on edge. As a beam of light pierces the sky, the priest's concern deepens. I'm afraid something big is about to happen in this world. Meanwhile, back in the realm where the battle rages on, the gravity of the situation becomes clear. Impossible, someone exclaims, unable to believe their eyes. Another voice, filled with disbelief, echoes. Star level? How could this happen? The realization that the hidden realm is undergoing an unprecedented upgrade leaves everyone stunned. As tension mounts, Su Yong, now fully transformed into the king of black flame, looms ominously, his fiery form radiating immense power. The stage is set for an epic confrontation, and the fate of all hangs in the balance. Su Yong, feeling a surge of new power, is taken aback, thinking, I've leveled up. His dragon eyes narrow in disbelief as the system message confirms reaching level 100. All attributes increased. Unlocked, new strategic level skill. The realization dawns on him. All attributes have significantly increased, and there's a new strategic skill. He examines his status screen in shock. The details reveal astonishing upgrades. King of Black Flame, Eternal Growth Stage. Level 100, Resurrection Prohibition. In this era where one doesn't die as long as their level isn't reset, this skill is like cheating. The skill even has a note. This skill can completely destroy the souls of professionals killed by it, preventing resurrection. The user can choose whether to destroy or not. Bewildered, Su Yang asks, System, what's going on? His mind races, wondering, was this black dragon supposed to stay at a certain level? Or could this be a consequence of the Hidden Realm's mysterious upgrade? Reflecting on the change, he realizes, and now, with the Dragon Slayer's heart special mechanism, the difficulty naturally increases. His thoughts raced. Though it was still unclear what early growth stage meant, the situation had completely changed. Towering over his opponents, AOS surveyed the area, noticing something amiss. Meanwhile, one of the team members, frantically searching, exclaimed, Bro, I've searched the tomb, but I didn't see the Dragon Slayer's heart. Did I get it wrong? Suddenly the realization hit. That's it. The Dragon Slayer's heart. It's in your possession. As the tension on the battlefield escalated, the leader shouted with urgency, Don't act on your own. Come back quickly. His voice carried both concern and frustration, but his words were ignored. One of the teammates, smirking to himself, thought, Doesn't this idiot notice the system notification? Convinced of his superiority, he reassured himself, This big fool can't possibly keep up with my speed. Arrogance quickly turned to horror as AOS's massive hands suddenly closed in. The team watched in shock as the powerful dragon swiftly crushed the overconfident warrior in an instant. The system delivered the grim news. Your teammate Louis has died. Captain Joe, what should we do? A team member asked. Joe Tai, visibly frustrated, contemplated their dwindling options. Usually, star-level bosses require a team of top-tier players to handle. With this few people, there's no hope of winning. The only option now is to. His decision was made. We can't beat it. Let's run, he yelled to the team. The group, initially shocked, quickly realized the gravity of the situation and began to retreat. The urgency in their movements was palpable, but not all agreed with the decision. One team member hesitated, frustrated by the need to flee. In contrast, AOS, towering over them, observed their retreat with cold, calculated eyes. A wise decision, he acknowledged internally. 
But just as they thought they might escape, his thoughts turned sinister. Do you think I will let you go? In an instant, the dragon unleashed a powerful attack, aiming to cut off their escape. The team, now cornered, had no choice but to face the consequences of their failed mission. I see the portal, someone shouted with urgency. The group rushed toward the glowing gateway, their last hope for survival. Quick, get out, another yelled, pushing everyone to move faster. But just as they approached the portal, one of them exclaimed in panic, It's here again! AOS had anticipated their move. His massive form blocked the exit, cutting off their escape route. The exit is blocked, the team shouted in despair. With no other options, Joe Tai quickly formulated a desperate plan. Stack all defensive buffs. Let's charge with everything we've got. However many of us can make it out alive is all we need, he commanded, rallying the team for a final, all-or-nothing push. As AOS unleashed his devastating annihilation breath, the searing flames engulfed the battlefield. The sheer force of the attack shattered even the strongest defensive barriers in an instant. Starshine-level damage is terrifying. My strongest defense barrier was shattered with just one hit, a team member exclaimed in disbelief. Another, exhausted and drained, lamented, my mana is running low. If the boss uses another skill, we're done for. Facing imminent defeat, the leader took a grim stance. Everyone, put your valuable items in the infinite ring to prevent loss. There's no hope left. The weight of their situation sank in, but not everyone was ready to give up. Impossible. I won't give up. I've killed you a thousand times before. I know all your abilities like the back of my hand. Even if you've advanced to Starshine level, I can still kill you once more. Chun Lun, defiant in the face of overwhelming odds, raised his hands to the sky, summoning his most powerful ability. With authority, he called out, Undead souls sleeping in the long river of time, use my power as a mediator to break the boundary between life and death. Let your existence appear in the world again. The air crackled with energy as the ground beneath him glowed an eerie green. Dark shadows emerged, swirling together to form an army of spectral warriors, the Cloudwater Legion. A system message flashed. Skill description. Summon all dead creatures on the battlefield to fight for you. Duration is limited, but will continuously drain the caster's mana and health. Chin Luen pointed towards AOS and roared, Go! Tear the enemy apart completely. The undead army charged forward, their ghostly forms blending with the earth, ready to clash with the mighty dragon. AOS, towering over the battlefield, scoffed at the sight of the advancing undead army. Die, you bunch of trash, he snarled with disdain. With a swift motion, he unleashed a powerful attack, scattering the undead forces. Chun Luan, watching his summoned army crumble under OS's might, gritted his teeth as the situation grew more desperate. He yelled as the ground trembled beneath OS's onslaught. In response, the undead dragon Marzo launched a counterattack, flames erupting from its maw as it charged at AOS. The fiery blast collided with the dragon, but AOS remained unfazed. This little flame can't even scratch my skin, he taunted, barely feeling the impact. As the two titanic forces clashed, the ground cracked and trembled under their might. But AOS stood strong, his confidence unshaken. Chun Luan and his allies were left in stunned silence, realizing just how formidable their enemy truly was. With a twisted grin, Chun Luan taunted, You damn beast! But transmigrators are immortal. Even if I fail this time, I'll come back to torment you again until I devour your soul completely. His laughter echoed across the battlefield, laced with madness. AOS, unfazed by the threats, coldly responded, Too bad. Starshine-level dungeons cannot be repeated. I wanted to torture you a few more times. But since we've come to this point, how could I let you leave easily? The dragon prepared to unleash his newfound power. Let me try out my new skill, he declared, as dark, ominous energy surged around him. The ground trembled beneath the weight of his wrath. AOS unleashed a massive, fiery attack, engulfing the battlefield in a blinding inferno. 
The attack was so powerful that the ground beneath it shattered, and the very air seemed to tremble with heat. One of the team members cried out as the flames enveloped him, the searing heat burning through his defenses. Aru's agonized roar echoed across the landscape, a desperate cry from someone caught in a fiery storm. Despite the intense pain, Chen Luen, with a twisted smile, defiantly shouted, It's burning, it hurts, but next time, I'll make you taste pain a hundred times worse. His laughter was filled with madness, a refusal to bow even in the face of overwhelming odds. But AOS, with a voice as cold as the abyss, declared, There won't be a next time. Chun Luan, suddenly filled with dread, gasped, What? As the realization of his impending doom sank in. His laughter was cut short as the flames consumed him, leaving nothing behind. Chen's screams echoed one last time before he was utterly consumed. As the flames subsided, a series of notifications appeared. You have killed level 115 Necromancer Chen Luan, level 113 Thunderous Warrior Zhou Tai, level 114 White Frost Demon Jang Chilian, level 112 Mountain Breaker Yang Chun, and level 110 Crimson Spear Lin Guang. The final message solidified the victory. Total experience gained, 9.51 million. Level up 2x. You have reached the limit of pre-transformation level. Please complete the transformation to unlock further levels.